Namaste, so family, Sky Goddess, and this video is about the planetary transits that will be taking place during the month of May, uh, under, you know, being influenced by the fifth house frequency being in Scorpio and the second house frequency being in Leo. If you listen to the May prediction uh, video that I did prior to this one, you will, you know, understand the connection between the fifth house and the second house. Okay. So, the transits, okay, we've got the sun is going to shift frequency into the frequency of Taurus, okay, so it's going to be sun in Taurus, and we, I spoke already about the second house being in the frequency, uh, being affected by the frequency of Leo, okay, so it's almost like a, a swap there with sun in Taurus, but it, I, I feel like it's more of a mirror effect. Like I spoke of that also in the uh, main prediction uh, predictions video. Okay, so we've got the sun, you know, which is the Earth really shifting frequency. That's the, you know, the ego, and it is called the sun. Of course, you know, uh, as we know it now, the sun doesn't, you know, we don't know if the sun actually moving. Okay. Uh, but we know that the Earth it revolves around the Sun, uh, as as well as the other planets. And while whilst revolving around the Sun, they you know transit the varying zodiacal frequencies. So the Sun will be transiting the frequency of Taurus, May twenty. Okay, and there is a significance there with May being five, and you know um, it beginning the twentieth of May which, you know, Taurus is the second zodiac. Uh, moving along to Mercury. Mercury, Mer Mercury will begin its transit in the frequency of uh, Gemini, May 3, and then it's going to retrograde in that same frequency, May 29. Uh, I'm going to go uh, back through them, all, the, um, all them transits and tie them into one and explain what those really mean. Moving on to Venus, we, we've got Venus transiting Gemini as well in, um, on May 8, right? There won't be a shift in frequency during the month, the fifth month, okay, for Mars, okay? But close to the end of this month, April 23, we've got Mars transiting Cancer. So we've got, you know, a lot of people, um, they're going to be in their feelings because Mars is your action uh, planet, your action uh, frequency, and it is going to be transiting the frequency of our emotions. So a lot of actions are going to be, you know, and attention is going to be there. More like actions, more in which our emotions are concerned, as well as, you know, people, you know, really making moves or making, you know, decisions. Uh, well, I'm not going to say decisions because decisions, uh, that's liberal frequency. They, you know, require thought and weigh in the mind. But, you know, moving out of emotions, <laughs> one doesn't necessar necessarily or always think or give thought to that. So we could have, you know, a lot of, you know, um, rash decisions made primarily out of emotions for those who are imbalanced, at least. Okay. So, you know, that frequency is going to prevail during the fifth month, uh, Mars in Aries, and uh, Mars, <laughs> pardon me, in Cancer. And, you know, where is Cancer? It's in the first house for this second 12-year cycle. And it's, you know, us dealing with our emotions, us being confined to home for uh, most of this 12-year cycle. Okay, let me relax for this one. So for the sun to be in Taurus, sun, that's our ego. That's um, how we want others to see us. That's how we want to be projected. Um, that's how we choose to project ourselves, rather. And with the sun in Taurus, um, coming off of Mercury being, you know, in Taurus and Venus transiting uh, Taurus, which they are currently 
still transiting because we are not yet in the fifth month if you're listening to this part okay and what it means for mercury to transit taurus is your communications and your thoughts are uh about your values your family tradition um your work okay workmanship and so it's a beautiful synchronicity to be thinking and talking about what you're going to be later on uh, focusing on and projecting yourself as. So that's what that means, tying that with the sun in Taurus, which will, you know, uh, begin May 20. Okay. Venus in Taurus is Venus in its own frequency. Valuing tradition, valuing whatever you value, valuing prestige, valuing your work. So during the month of April, which I spoke about already, there is emphasis on your work, your work ethics, your morals, your traditions, what you value. Okay, and there are going to be deep transformations because people are reprioritizing and are going to be reprioritizing what it is that they value and how they want to value what they value and what is valuing what they want to value so there's a lot of introspection there and so with you know venus being in taurus he's saying i value tradition i value morals and ethics i value my work i value prestige okay and it is a chain of command with this venus where in which we're being taught and all the value systems all them systems okay are being affected from the first house which is self to the 12th house which is belief and the whole collective the whole tribe of humanity so we've got okay valuing the family now we're dissecting the family now and moving on to gemini Gemini is an aspect of Taurus because it's an aspect of the family. And then now we're scrutinizing the value that we've, have, we've been placing and we have placed on our communication style and our siblings and our peers, the people we, you know, um, consider, you know, I'm not going to say friends, people or, you know, age group. Okay, his friends, it's Aquarius. Okay, dog frequency. So, it is safe to say, you know, with Mercury going to tra start its transit May 3 in Gemini, thoughts and communications in regarding our, our siblings and our peers, as well as this could be a lot of communication on social media. Okay? There's going to be, you know, value on, you know, um, I feel like, you know, there's going to be a lot of social media activity because Sun in Taurus with these other frequencies, Mercury in Gemini, uh, Venus in Gemini, you know, the systems of systemized communication, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, emphasis on those like social media. And there could also be an, uh, uh, what, what do you call it? Um, overburdening us uh, these platforms because there's going to be value and thought and emphasis on these systems okay so systems you know they're going to take center stage but primarily you know the you know the systems that deal with communication as well as you know our family system uh we are siblings mm -hmm. And, you know, to tie that in with the Mars in Cancer, which will begin me, uh, April 23th, my apologies, uh, it's going to be a somewhat emotional time because we are going to be in our emotions, okay? That Mars in Cancer is saying, I am emotional, okay? In whatever emotional way you are, some people, their way of being emotional is not communication, communicating. Some, their way of being emotional is communicating a whole lot some people their way of communicating is you know through you know 
uh, varying means and activities like you know um, recre recreation and for some of them this could be you know uh, sex okay so you know people you know their communication um, varies their communicative you know uh, language is it's different but communication will be you know the prime focus during the fifth month and the platforms and you know the systems that we use to communicate Tying that with, you know, the frequencies that we're now traversing, we are in that second 12-year cycle. And, you know, it is being led by moon in Aries, is, uh, which can be interpreted as cancer rising. I am emotional. And that's the frequency that uh, Mars is going to be in by, you know, a April 23. Okay. Let's look at the third house because, you know, the, the third house is taking, you know, a form of, you know, secondary center stage, like I said. So we've got the third house being uh, impacted by the hermit, Virgo. And, you know, we can interpret that as more thoughtful, sensible communication. <laughs> because, you know, Virgos, they are thinkers, you know, like Aquarians, okay? And thank God the third house is not in its own frequency, Gemini, right? So, we can also interpret this, this as, you know, a lot of people talking to themselves not saying a lot of people going to go crazy, but, you know, talking to yourself is a form of therapy and counseling oneself without, you know, you feeling paranoid of someone knowing your business and possibly, you know, spreading your business. And, you know, it seems to be a very wise age. It's, it's, it's wisdom to isolate oneself. At least every now and then because that's the only way you can truly introspect and to introspect you know that's the only way you can actually become better versions of yourself and so the world need this frequency right here this second 12 year cycle being led by moon in Aries area uh, cancer rising is necessary Where's the sixth house? That's in Sagittarius. So we've got wise communication and spiritual wants too, because the ninth house that's in Pisces. What? Well, where's the twelfth house? That's in Gemini. And so that's where a lot of communications are gonna be at. The subconscious people actually thinking before they speak. So you know it's gonna be a time of communication, but it's not gonna be vain wasteful, um, petty, silly communication. Because the hermit, Virgo, is, you know, dominating, you know, her brother sign, Gemini, okay, ruled by Mercury. It's leading the way, okay? It's controlling the words that come out of our mouths, okay? And therefore, the words can be more thoughtful because the sixth house that's in Sagittarius, okay? The sage, the wise one, the teacher. So, you know, a lot of people could be studying. A lot of people, you know, could be watching teachers. A lot of people could be, you know, uh, well, obviously, because school is now online. Everybody's watching the teachers. Um, even the parents. <laughs> Finally, at last, we can see what they're, you know, teaching our children, how they're treating our children. And we've got a lot of, you know, you know a lot of you know thinking in regards to our siblings so a lot of sibling relationships are gonna be mended you know a lot you know some gonna get broken you know like I said there's gonna be a swap go ahead and listen to my May predictions okay there's gonna be a swap for four four a swap okay so you know where you and your siblings were you know really going through a hard time this is going to be a time of reconciliation for you and them. 
if it was that you and your siblings, you know, were like two peas in a pod, you can, you know, expect some turbulence in, you know, your relationship with your siblings, you know, this year. And it is not to say, oh, crude fate. You know, it is the balance. And, you know, a rough sea makes a good sailor. And when you go through things and, you know, you go through, you know, uh, hardships, they actually mold you to be a better person. Now, if you're not molded into a better person after your hardships, then, you know, you weren't born to live. You were born to die. Okay? <laughs> it's as simple as that. So, you know, uh, a lot of communication, like I said, but thoughtful communication. And this was, you know, very quick and, you know, precise. Mm hmm So, you know, all in all, all in all, May does seem like a really, you know, down to earth, sensible month. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, that, you know, Scorpio frequency there is going to kick off uh, a series of freak storms and, you know, weird ass events and, you know, a lot of, you know, chaos in a subtle way. Okay. A humbling and stuff away. Go on and um, listen to that video. Um, I think the title of that was Pale Horse, Death for All, The Beginning. And that's what Spirit said to call that video. Because there's going to be the beginning of an era during the fifth month. And this is going to last, you know, uh, through to the 11th month. That's November, okay? Sagittarius season. So that's what I got for you, my soul family. Thank you guys for tuning in and listening. Namaste. Mwah.